what if Alice was in Avengers Endgame? This is fan fiction. Now, I'm just re-uploading part one because this one got a copyright strike. Possibly because I used some scenes from the movie to do it, like the thunderclap. So instead, I will not be adding the thunderclap to this part of the film. The thunderclap is there. We already know the thunderclap had happened. So let's get into this four part. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Re-uploaded re part one. We would open up. We would open up with Alice and her sister reading, doing a history lesson under a tree. Now this is a part where Alice's sister thinks that her sister should be paying attention. But instead, her and her sister are sucked into a portal. Now we open up on in Captain Marvel, where Captain Marvel has arrived looking for Nick Fury. Because she got the pager asking where Nick is. After that, Alice and her sister land on Captain Marvel. Alice lands on Captain Marvel when, when her sister lands on her feet. Alice's sister and... Myth now, Captain Marvel blasts Alice off of her. As Nick Fury, as, as Natasha asks if she's Nick Fury's secret space operative, Captain Marvel says she is. Alice asked the question about what Natasha meant, and Natasha said that only some of Nick's highly, highest classified agents know about this. Where then we stop, where we can cut to, to, be, to be continued with the sign saying Alice will return in Avengers Endgame. Alice and Captain Marvel will return in Avengers Endgame. After this, Alice and her sister are wondering how they're going to get home now. Because their only way home was through the portal they came through. Then we hear a screech from out. We then see Captain America shaving off his beard. As Captain America shaves off his Infinity War beard, similar to the original friend, sim similar to the original film. The only difference is I'm doing, I'm adding one minor difference. Only this time, Alice tries to walk in on Cap, but then she hears Cap talking to himself. Saying, oh, I failed. I failed everyone. Tony, I failed everyone. It was all my fault. If I didn't sign the, if I didn't sign the Sokovia Accords, we could have lost together too. As Cap is in tears, as Alice hears Cap crying, Alice is about to go in to comfort him when Natasha stops her, saying two words. Cap needs some time. We had a civil war. He doesn't need help. Alice's sister asks what they mean, what she meant by a civil war, like the ones in the history books. Natasha tells her that they had a war over it to not to sign not to sign a certain document called the Sokovia Accords. The Avengers were held accountable for what happened in Sokovia. The Avengers were held accountable for what happened in Sokovia. AKA all the people that died that day when they fought Ultron. AKA when they fought Ultron in Sokovia. It was half their fault for what happened. Tony was the one who created Ultron. It was his fault Ultron went loose. We then we then hear the we then hear the sound of the Banatar landing as Tony appears. Tony walks Tony walks out and is greeted by Cap, who then. He then notices Alice asking who the kid is. 
And Alice says that she's too scared. Alice is too scared of the strange man that just came out of the giant spaceship to even talk right now. Meanwhile, Alice and her sister are Alice and her sister are busy with the Avengers. Alice and her sister are busy talking with Cap how they're going to get home. They're stuck there until they can find a reasonable way home. The only way they would be able to get home is with the Infinity Stones. We have this same exchange on What's Up with Thor as we had the same Thor skin the same Thor exchange we had in the original film. Everything plays out the same there. Alice and her sister then chime in saying that they want to go home. Natasha says there's only one way that, that Alice and her sister will be able to go home. And that's the Infinity Stones. Then Kat says, why don't we just use the stones to bring everybody back? As, as Captain Marvel chimes in, Steve... We get Steve doing his usual... His usual response, doing his usual, let's go get this. Then you know what he says after that. Then we know what he, then we know what Steve says as the movie would cut to the Avengers intro. Now Alice and her sister would be aboard the Benatar. Now, Alice and, well, Alice wouldn't be going to space with the garden with the Avengers because her sister was too worried about her well-being and everything else. When the Avengers return, Alice asks if her and her sister are going home. And Cap says that, this, that Thanos destroyed the stones with the stones. Alice and her sister are saddened, knowing now that they'll never get home. We have our five-year time jump, where then we have Ant-Man arriving back from the quantum realm. Ant-Man said that time moves slower in the quantum realm. Then Cap thinks about it. He then says that there may be a way to get Alice and her sister home after all. Cap and the Avengers walk directly to Tony's place with Alice and her sister in tow. Morgan is in Tony's shed playing with the rescue armor that he got Pepper for their anniversary. It's a similar scene between father and daughter. Is a similar scene between father and daughter in that scene. Where the timeline would jump to its usual, where the timeline would change to the original timeline. We all know from the Avengers movie. Cap and Tony. Cap and Tony talk about the only way to get Alice and her sister and bring everybody back is to use time travel. Saying that Tony says to Cap that Tony tells Cap that he doesn't want to lose the slice of heaven he's already created and walks away. He tells the he tells Alice her sister and the Avengers it's okay if they stay for lunch if they don't talk about their time travel plan. We then see Pepper telling Tony that do you think your friends are right about this? 
Tony tells her that time travel is impossible. Even his dad couldn't figure it out. Tony walks away. Meanwhile, the rest of the Avengers turn to Professor Hulk, who then says that there's... And once, and once that happens, we get, we get Natasha and Alice heading to, to, I think, we're going to, I think that we're, I think I know where Ken, where, where Miss, where Barclay Barton was. He was in Majapur. He wasn't where, and um, he wasn't in New York. He was in Majapur. We see Natasha put Alice back into Quinjet, telling her to wait. She doesn't want Alice to, to face Clint face to face, because this is a burden, burden, burden from her past that she has to face alone. Natasha tells Clint that there may be a way to bring his family and his daughter and his wife back to life. Clint tells Natasha, don't you dare give me hope. The timeline that, that will play out the same. Natasha would hold Clint's hand, saying that I wish I should have I wish I could have given it to you sooner. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do something else. Seeing that we may need some extra widow power on our side. So Yelena won't get snapped out. Nope, I'm keeping Yelena. Natasha then tracks her sister Yelena to where she is now. Alice asks Natasha where they are, and Natasha says they're here to get an old friend. Natasha says it's time for a family reunion. We see Natasha talking to Yelena telling her there was a way that they could bring back the dusted and everyone that was lost. Natasha's parents, Natasha's adopted widow family, step out of them behind Lena and say that they're in too. We have that family back together again. We then have, we then have Alexei put on his red guardian suit and hug his two daughters. Alice says, this is sweet and all, but we have a world to save. Guess you're already becoming an Avenger. Everyone lands, and, and everyone's introduced, and Natasha introduces her widow family. Now, we know that Taskmaster already got changed because Avenger, because Black Widow takes place before Avengers Endgame. It takes place during the timeline between Avengers Infinity War and Captain America Civil War. So basically, we already know that Taskmaster's been reformed. Gotta get very careful and... We then have Tony drive in, saying that he figured out time travel overnight. We then have the Avengers talk out their plan for the time heist. With Cap telling them that there are five, there are six stones scattered through time. Now this is where I'm going to stop it because I already, because I already did this part back in the original. I'll see you guys next time.